can we settle down? Morning, everybody. How's everyone? How are you all feeling? Are you? <laughs> no one feeling ill? Good. Great. Right, we're going to uh, consider today, uh, as you may know, Letter to the Brothers, or a small part of it. It's a very, very long go show. Um, and uh, one or two of you. Hello. <laughs> Echoes. Uh, one or two of you only one or two of you may have heard this lecture. I started to give it about two months ago on regional visits and also on South Headquarters treks. But it's such an important go show uh, that I really want uh, everybody gradually to hear it. It's important because it concerns the negative or destructive force of life. That is to say, in Buddhist terms, Sancho Shima. Sanchashima is something that everyone's always talking about, but uh, don't know an awful lot about how it works. And the purpose of this Go Show is to explain to us how it works. Once we know how something works, it's much easier to cope with it. We can recognize it, and we can take action to defeat it. When you can't see an enemy, it's very difficult to win a battle, isn't it? But when you know the enemy, uh, it makes it much more simple. So that is the purpose for me giving this lecture, which indeed was based on a lecture given by Dr. Yamazaki, who, as most of you know, is the chairman of the European Institute of Nichiren Shoshu. Uh, so Letter to the Brothers, as the name implies, was a gosho or letter written to two brothers. Uh, uh, the family name was Ikegami. They're quite famous because uh, they suffered from an attack of what you might term classic Sanchoshima. That is to say, their father uh, was totally against their practicing Buddhism. And not only was he against it, but he tried every way possible to disrupt their practice. So in Buddhist terms, this means that the negative or destructive or devilish force of life was working through the father in order to prevent those two brothers from gaining happiness from their practice and from spreading that happiness to others. So in this sense, uh, it was classic Sanshashima because uh, one of the obstacles and devils uh, covered by that term, Sanshashima, is opposition from people who hold influential or authoritative positions uh, in society. And of course, that includes one's father, uh, whom uh, from the very earliest age, uh, we, we sort of got used to looking up to. So uh, the Ikigami brothers were under uh, an extremely difficult form of Sanshoshima. And this was especially so in those medieval days in Japan, where the family uh, was of immense importance and uh, followed strict rules of conduct. And therefore, to be opposed by one's father was a formidable thing. Even today, it's quite a formidable thing, isn't it? But in those days, not only was it formidable within the family, but in society generally, for a, for a son to be opposed uh, by the father uh, was a really shattering experience. So this uh, negative force of life worked as usual in a very cunning way. It always seeks out the weak points. And, uh, the, of these two brothers, the youngest was weaker in faith. Furthermore, the father reckoned that by attacking particularly the elder brother, who had the stronger faith, 
If he went under, then of course the younger brother would follow too. But there was an even more subtle side to it. Because uh, the father eventually uh, disowned the elder son. And this meant, of course, that the younger son would inherit the father's estate when he died. Therefore he reckoned by using that sort of form of bribery and pressure, uh, without a doubt the younger one would collapse once the, the elder brother had been disowned. But in fact it didn't happen, fortunately. Nitra and Daishonin wrote them several letters to keep them going during this tense and difficult situation. And uh, although he disowned the elder brother, the younger did not stop practicing as a result. Then the father wavered and he became reconciled with the elder son. Then a year later the father wavered again and he disowned both the brothers. And then a year after that the father began to practice himself and gave up the struggle. So it had a great ending. This letter was written in 1275 and this struggle between the brothers and their father went on uh, from 1275 to 1278 when the records show that the father began to practice and embrace the Gons. Nichand, uh, the devilish force of life also, we gather from Nichiren Daishonin's letters, worked in another cunning way. It worked through the wives. The wives, of course, are very susceptible obviously to anything that's happening to their husbands. The fact, for instance, that the elder brother might lose all his money, all his entitlement to his father's estate, could have a deep effect on a woman because it undermined her security, especially if she had a large family of children. So also through the wives, uh, this devilish force would work and the father would no doubt use the wives in order to get his own way. So in the Gosho, which Nishin Daishonin wrote, uh, he always emphasized as well the need for the wives to strongly support their husbands and never to give in, and to have real unity together. So the particular passage which we're going to read covers two main points. The first one is the nature of Sanshoshima, and how it works. And the second point is unity and strong practice in order to defeat it. The nature of Sanchashima, how it works, and the vital importance of unity, second point, in order to defeat it. So uh, I'll ask Kathy now to read the whole passage and she'll tell you the page it's on in your books. In the sheet that you have, it's on page 11, four from the bottom, where it says the doctrine. Or if you have volume one of the major writings, it's on page 145, line five from the top. So, the doctrine of Ichinin Samzen, revealed in the fifth volume of the Maka Shikan, is especially profound. If you propagate it, devils will arise without fail. Were it not for these, there would be no way of knowing that this is the true teaching. Page 11, fourth line from the bottom. I oh, better start again. Have you all got it? Page 11, fourth line from the bottom. Where it says the doctrine, okay. The doctrine of Ichin and Sanzen revealed in the fifth volume of the Makashikan is especially profound. If you propagate it, devils will arise without fail. Were it not for these, there would be no way of knowing that this is the true teaching. One passage from the same volume reads, as practice progresses and understanding grows, the three obstacles and four devils emerge, vying with one another to interfere. You should be neither influenced nor frightened by them. If you fall under their influence, you will be led into the paths of evil. If you are frightened by them, you will be prevented from practicing true Buddhism. 
This quotation not only applies to Nichiren, but also is the guide for his disciples. Reverently make this teaching your own and transmit it as an axiom of faith for future generations. The three obstacles in this quotation are Bonosho, Gosho, and Hosho. Bonosho are the obstacles to one's practice, which arise from greed, anger, stupidity, and the like. Gosho are the obstacles posed by one's wife or children, and Hosho are the hindrances caused by one's sovereign or parents. Of the four devils, the functions of the devil of the sixth heaven are of this last kind. In Japan today, is there anyone who has actually encountered the three obstacles and four devils? Yet many people claim they have mastered the Maka Shikan. The statement, if you fall under their influence, you will be led into the paths of evil, does not indicate me merely the three evil paths, but also tranquility and rapture, and in general, all of the nine worlds. Therefore, all of the sutras except the Lotus Sutra, including those of Kagon, Aegon, Hodo, and Hanya, as well as the Nirvana and Dainichi Sutras, will lead people toward paths of evil. Also, with the exception of the Tendai sect, the adherents of the seven other major Buddhist sects are in reality agents of hell who drive others toward evil paths. Even in the Tendai sect, there are those who profess faith in the Lotus Sutra, yet actually lead others toward the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings. They too are agents of hell who cause people to fall into the evil paths. Now you two brothers are like the hermit and his disciple. If either of you gives up halfway, you will both fail to attain Buddhahood. You are like the two wings of a bird or the two eyes of a man, and your wives are your support. Women support others and thereby cause others to support them. When a husband is happy, his wife will be fulfilled. If a husband is a thief, his wife will become one too. This is not a matter of this life alone. A man and wife are as close as a body and shadow, flowers and fruit, or roots and leaves in every existence of life. Insects eat the trees they live in, and fish drink the water in which they swim. If grass withers, orchids grieve. If pine trees flourish, oaks rejoice. Even trees and grass are so closely related. The hiyoku is a bird with one bird with one body and two heads. Both of its mouths nourish the same body. Hiboku are fish with only one eye each, so the male and female remain together for life. A husband and wife should be like them. You two wives should have no regrets, even if you are harmed by your husbands because of your faith in this teaching. If both of you unite in encouraging their faith, you will follow the path of the Dragon King's daughter and become the model for women attaining enlightenment in the evil latter day of the law. Insofar as you can act this way, no matter what may happen, I, Nichiren, will tell the two saints, the two heavenly gods, and the ten goddesses, as well as Shakyamuni and Teho Buddhas, to make you Buddhas in every future existence. The Roku Haramitsu Sutra states that one should become the master of his mind rather than let his mind master him. Thank you very much. So we'll go back now and read the first paragraph once again. Want to read it again? Just the first paragraph. Okay. The doctrine of Ichinin Sanzen revealed in the fifth volume of the Makashikan is especially profound. If you propagate it, devils will arise without fail. Were it not for these, there would be no way of knowing that this is the true teaching. One passage from the same volume reads, As practice progresses and understanding grows, the three obstacles and four devils emerge, vying with one another to interfere. You should be neither influenced nor frightened by them. If you fall under their influence, you will be led into the paths of evil. If you are frightened by them, you will be prevented from practicing true Buddhism. This quotation not only applies to Nichiren, but also is the guide for his disciples. Reverently make this teaching your own, and transmit it as an axiom of faith for future generations. Thank you. This is such a famous paragraph. Many of you have read it before, and it's so incredibly important that we really ought to have it engraved deep into our hearts, the more we read it, uh, the better, the more meaningful too it'll become. If you propagate it, devils will arise without fail. Were it not for these, there would be no, no way of knowing that this is the true teaching. The devilish force of life, 
which is always trying to obstruct the valuable or positive side of life. When Mr. Toda uh, was president, the Soka Gakkai, and the Soka Gakkai were suffering its first persecution uh, from the authorities, the story is told of how for days and days he was wondering who was leading this attack against the Soka Gakkai. There must be one person who's leading it and stirring everyone up. And he chanted Daimoku, and he thought about it, and he couldn't find the answer. He couldn't imagine who it could possibly be. And in the end, he came to the realization that it was no particular person. The devilish force of life was at work in a whole number of different people all at different levels of government and local government. There was no concerted plan of action against the Soka Gakkai. Yet it was occurring all over the country, this opposition. The reason was that the Soka Gakkai at that time were making a great surge forward in Shakabuku. And because of that, the Soka Gakkai as a whole, through all sorts of different people, who are acting as an instrument for the devilish force of life to obstruct that progress. This is the way this extraordinary phenomena works. It's not a coordinated and planned thing. It's something working deep in people's lives, causing them to behave in ways that prove to be obstacles to progress and value and happiness. If you propagate it, devils will arise without fail, the Scotia says. Were it not for these, there would be no way of knowing that this is the true teaching. Some of you had incredible difficulty getting here. Why? Because you were coming to do something which was going to be of deep value to your life and to your future happiness. Therefore, in an extraordinary way, the negative force of life tried to obstruct you, no doubt, in countless different ways. Some of them quite small, some of them really quite big and difficult. No one had made a plan to stop you all coming to the young women's course on the Isle of Wight. Nishin Daishonin says this is proof that this is the true teaching. If it wasn't the true teaching, this obstruction wouldn't occur in this extraordinary way. Because it's the true teaching, Sanchashima appears. So nowadays, if we're going to do an NSUK activity and I don't get Sanchashima, I begin to get worried. Something's wrong somewhere. I know that before the World Peace Expo, we'll get Sanchashima. We should all realize that and understand it. This is an inevitable part of life. But as the Nietzsche Daishonin says in the Gosha, if we run away from it, it's only us who are the losers. We never advance. Therefore, the important thing is to face it and chant Dainoku and defeat it. This is what this Gosha is all about. So why should it be so? Uh, way back 3,000 years ago, Shakyamuni Buddha said that Mapo, the latter day of the law, uh, would be filled with the three poisons. It would be a time, he said, of chaos and difficulty. In a sense, because in this age of Mapo, in which we were born, the three poisons are rife, you could say that the uh, devilish force of life, you know, has a great time, a greater time than, it, than it's ever had in all the history of this planet. That's what the early stages of the latter day of law are like, and this is what all the Buddhas prophesied, starting with Shakyamuni so long ago. So we have to know how to deal with this thing if we're going to break through and win and progress and become happy. It's a question, isn't it? 
of either becoming a follower of the negative force or the devil as it's called colloquially or of being the follower of the positive and valuable force of life which is termed the Buddha this is the choice we have and of course uh, Buddhism and all its teachings is concerned with this battle between the devil and the Buddha in that guidance of senses about climbing the mountain to the 21st century which you heard yesterday he defined that again didn't he very clearly we're engaged in a battle between the devil and the Buddha that sounds very old-fashioned and sort of legendary there are people uh, in this world many 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 people in this world who think that talk of the devil is something old-fashioned of course that was the devil of Christianity who was some horrifying being hovering around outside you and waiting to pop in and, and possess you at any moment but Buddhism so sharply penetrates the way life is made up and points out that it isn't a question of the devil popping in from outside you the devil is right there inside you anyway and in every single human being and every single living thing the negative force exists so what is the purpose of Buddhism? it is to win the battle within one's own life within one's own life between the devil and the Buddha the negative force and the forces of value and happiness so all of Nichiren Daishonin's teachings you could say are concerned really with this one point winning that battle so the purpose of this devilish force is to put us into hell no other aim but that the purpose of the positive force life force as we call it is to put us into the state of Buddha the devilish force works to put us into hell and I'm sure every one of you here must have had experiences where it succeeded in winning the battle and putting you there certainly in my life it had, has on many occasions so let's take two simple examples of how this can happen the devil, devilish force of like speaking by and large works in two different ways either through bribery or through denial that is to say it either bribes us with what appear to be wonderful things and we go into the state of rapture or it denies us the things that we want with our whole heart and both ways can put us into hell so if we take bribery first say uh, one of you has a boyfriend he was attracted to you hmm? and you really fall for him but he doesn't practice hmm? and gradually this handsome person becomes more and more the center of one's life the be all and end all of everything when he says oh let's go to a movie and there's no time to do gongyo you say okay yes come on <laughs> when you know you ought to be chanting half an hour's daimoku and he's sitting there looking a bit upset what do you do? you don't chant it sometimes anyway what happens is that this person becomes the center of your life and as a result of that one's practice gradually becomes weaker and weaker and weaker and then an awful thing happens you suddenly begin to feel that this young man is not so interested in you as he was before there's something changing in your relationship of course it's changing because the life force and vibrance and brilliance of your life which he saw in you through your practice though he didn't know it came from your practice and which attracted to him to you in the first place is disappearing from your life 
the very thing that attracted him has gone or is going or waning and weakening therefore he begins to see someone who's not really like the person that he first was attracted to and in the end uh, he parts company and you drop into hell that's a way in which this devilish force works in order to obstruct your progress and your happiness the other way as I said is denial you chant and chant and chant because you want something so badly and it doesn't come and you keep chanting and it doesn't come and then you begin to complain and to blame even turn against the Gonson and as a result of course you get bachi you know, bad effects and that makes you even more upset and eventually you stop practicing and what happens you go into hell this is the way the negative force of life works if one allows it to but if you understand the negative force of life and the way it works then it's much less likely that you'll be caught by these sort of tricks and of course it always works uh, towards one's weak points so the purpose as I said of all that we're talking about this morning is so that we should understand it and recognize it and know how to cope with it so let's move on from there to considering what is the function of these devils why should this wretched devilish force exist in life it's such a nuisance isn't it but nevertheless we should never be surprised by it so the truth about this devilish force or Sancho Shima is that its purpose is to strengthen us that is the whole reason for its existence unless there was this devilish force of life everything would go so smoothly wouldn't it we'd only want something and we'd have it whatever we wanted to do we'd do it hmm? life would become easy we'd become complacent lazy useless floppy flabby jellies hmm? <laughs> it's true though isn't it it's because we have to fight against this force that we can become strong so as you know there's the famous analogy most of you know it of the aeroplane taking off simple aerodynamics when the aeroplane takes off it has to use an immense amount of acceleration and as a result of that an immense amount of fuel in order to overcome the resistance of the air mm -hmm. that air the resistance of it is rather like the negative force but through battling against it that resistance or air eventually gets under its wings and actually lifts it into the air hmm? this is a very good analogy this is exactly like Sanshashima provided we don't run away provided we battle against it with our Daimoku eventually we shall find ourselves lifted and away hmm? cruising away you know surging forward in our lives so always therefore Nichiren Daishonin said the greatest resistance is followed by the greatest benefit we must win that battle otherwise we could never advance but in the winning of it we become strong don't we we are taking one more pace through all that Daimoku we've chanted towards the state of Buddhahood so this is the purpose of this force of life in the very amazing nature of this universe it must exist mustn't it otherwise the universe and ourselves and everything in it would never be progressive however this leads to a second point that's really important to deeply consider and keep firmly in one's life because the devilish force of life has a purpose 
and that purpose is to make one strong, the obstacles or difficulties that you encounter through it are never, never, never insurmountable. They can always be overcome. Stands to reason, doesn't it? If it's a part of the mechanics of that amazing creative energy called life itself. Of course we can always overcome every single obstacle or difficulty that we encounter because it's only there to make us fight and become strong. Therefore, in the light of the universal law, Sancho Shima would defeat its purpose if all it did was to put us under. That's not the purpose of it. It's not supposed to put us under. We're supposed to battle against it and then we'll ride over it or through it. That's the reason for it. So these sort of things we should understand and really remind each other and encourage each other, shouldn't we? Sometimes it's very difficult to realize that we're under an attack from Sanchashima. All we see is the obstacles and difficulties and problems. We need to help each other. That's why towards the end of this Gosha, Nichiren Daishan emphasizes unity and friendship, that we can turn to each other and say, can't you see? It's Sanchashima attacking you. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> the moment we understand that, somehow things change in us, don't they? We start to say to the Gons, and nothing will make me give up. I'm not going to be defeated by this ridiculous thing. And then we can break through. So Nichiren Daishonin said, this is proof of the true law. The existence of this force called Sanchashima is proof of the true law. Proof of the fact that we are following a course of action which is so vital and so important for our happiness and for the happiness of the world that this negative force of life resists tremendously just as it does an aeroplane that's flying off to Timbuktu or New Zealand or somewhere. So, San Sho Shi Ma. Sho is obstacles, Ma is devils. Three obstacles and four devils. San Sho Shi Ma. Sho obstacles. Obstacles, of course, are outside us, aren't they? Something in our environment. Ma, devils, are inside us. These are the two forms that this force takes in opposing our advance. So, in considering the obstacles outside us, you may feel, well, what can it be then that is outside us and creates these barriers. But the truth is, of course, that this all comes from inside us too. Something in our life attracts the obstacle to us. Say we have a very angry nature, right? And we upset all sorts of people. Those people become obstacles to us and try and hinder our progress because they don't like us. But the force that's created that opposition is inside us, isn't it? We've drawn those obstacles to us through our behavior. Hmm? So either way, in the end, whether it's an obstacle from without or a devil from within, uh, it's always all within us. We've drawn everything to us through the way we are acting and behaving. So as I said earlier, the devilish force of life works to drop us into hell. It wants to do this because the aim of this force is to sap our life force, to take away our life force. In hell, as you know, there's very little life force. Once we get there, we feel trapped and bowed down, don't we? We haven't got the life force to get out of it. It's a horrible feeling. This is what that force is trying to do. So it's trying to put us into hell through stopping our practice or uh, by causing problems and difficulties which we feel are too great to overcome. 
This is the way it works. And of course, if we allow ourselves to be pulled back into hell, then everything goes, doesn't it? In hell where there's no life force, where we can hardly bring ourselves to even chant one daimoku, there are certainly no benefits, hmm? certainly no good fortune coming into one's life. Everything uh, that we've gained in the past is being arrested and stopped and wasted. So this devilish force uh, exists in everybody and is an inherent part of life with a very, very important purpose. And I hope that is really clear to everyone. And this is why Nichiren Daishonin at the end of that paragraph says, reverently make this teaching your own and transmit it as an axiom of faith for future generations. It's incredibly important, isn't it? That not only ourselves, but the people we teach Buddhism to, and everyone that practices to the gods and in the future understands Sanchashima, what it is and what it's there for. Then, when we know the enemy, and our future generations know the enemy, it'll always be overcome. Nichiren Daishonin said in another Gosho, the two laws of evil and goodness are like right and left, and are inherent in life. The two laws of evil and goodness are like right and left and are inherent in life. In other words, both the devil and the Buddha, both the negative force and the positive force of life are all a part of nam myo ho renge kyo the law of the universe itself. For that reason, both the negative and the positive force of life are on the Gonzen. So, for instance, Devadatta, that evil cousin of Shakyamuni who tried to kill him and was so jealous of him, is on the Gonzen. Also on the Gonzen is Namyo Horengekyo. And Namyo Horengekyo down the center, of course, bathes everything else in its light. In other words, if we activate the power of the Buddha state, then it turns everything into value. Each one of the nine worlds can be turned to something positive, though each has its own destructive side as well. So the purpose of chanting nam myoho renge kyo is to turn all those nine worlds into something positive and valuable. So at this point, uh, I'd like to go a little deeper into how this devilish force of life works. Basically, its purpose is to create illusions. An illusion that you cannot overcome what it is that's in your way. Or an illusion that what you're doing uh, is going to be bring you happiness. So the main purpose of this devilish force, in the form of Ma, especially, that is to say, working inside you, is to create these illusions. So let's go through a few examples that I thought out to try and illustrate this point clearly, at all sorts of different levels. So for example, a scientist, because of his greed or ambition for power, and money and recognition in society, his desire to become famous, may decide to work, as many of them are, uh, on the development of nuclear weapons of destruction. There are thousands of them at work in this world at the moment. Why do they do it? No doubt because they think they'll earn money or become famous and through that become happy in society and provide a better uh, chance for their children, maybe. Yet their work uh, is causing them to make weapons which can destroy the whole world and all that society in which they want themselves and their children to be comfortable and happy and perhaps famous. 
So it's an illusion, isn't it? That could cause a scientist to work in that way, day in, day out, on weapons of such terrible destruction. Another example could be a mother. She wants her son to be great. And because of that, uh, because she dotes on him, on the one hand she spoils him, and on the other hand she drives this small boy forward in his academic studies. And the result of that is this incredible difference between spoiling on one hand and being driven to work and study day in, day out, for all hours of the day, causes the boy to crack and maybe he commits suicide. There have been many such cases in Japan recently because of the pressure of parents in order to drive their children forward to become great people and at the same time spoiling them. Materialism is itself an illusion, isn't it? An illusion that lasted a long time that you could gain happiness through possessions, through possessing things that this would give you lasting happiness. Absolute nonsense, isn't it? Most people realize now that it was an illusion. Yet, at one point, it obsessed nearly the whole of the Western world. Another example would be a businessman who works and works and works in order to make money. Maybe he loves money. He wants to buy things. And then he dies at the age of 30-odd uh, of a coronary. Hmm? An illusion again. It hasn't given him happiness. And the negative force of life has destroyed him and cut his life short because he didn't have any way or any rock to build his life on. So likewise, people also go titan. In the organization, uh, through the workings of this force, Maybe the reason they go to Aichen is that they are complaining about something in the organization. Perhaps someone else has been made a group leader instead of them. Or they feel the organization is going wrong in some way, or, or taking the wrong track. They really sincerely feel it. And they stop practice. It's absurd, isn't it? What they should do is to fight to get whatever it is that they believe is wrong put right never give up their practice because of such a thing. One lady uh, who I had a letter from handed in her gohonzon and she complained in her letter that the reason she was doing so was because she thought that Buddhism was very materialistic. Everybody was always chanting for material things, which isn't true anyway. But this was the reason she handed in her gohonzon. Yet, in another part of her letter to me, she really acknowledged that through her practice, she'd completely restored the self-confidence which she'd lost nine years before. So in one hand she was complaining, and on the other hand she was acknowledging the incredible benefits that she got out of practice. Yet she stopped practicing. Then right at the end of the letter, in two lines, she said, in three months' time, I'm ma marrying a Muslim gentleman, and he doesn't like my practice. This was why she'd stopped, under an illusion that through stopping she's going to find happiness. She's actually become a Muslim too. So uh, this is the strange way, the confused mind, that this force can cause in one's life. So of course it's true that it's a vicious circle, isn't it? When we're being pulled down we complain more and more because we lack life force. So, how can the devil be defeated? We've talked a lot about how it works. How can we defeat it? This is the most important thing of all. And the answer to that, of course, is by, as Dr. Yamazaki put it, using the sword of regular practice. This is the only way we can stop ourselves being trapped by illusions. The sword of regular practice. Through doing Gongyo and Daimoku every day, through doing Shakabuku, through doing study, we can make sure that the negative devilish force of life never obstructs us, that we can overcome all obstacles, all problems and difficulties, 
and most important of all, we can shatter the illusions in our minds that's led us, that have led us astray in the past. So this is a vital point to understand. If we give up practice, or if we stop, if we slow down, the illusions will take possession of us again, and we'll start heading down the wrong track in order to find happiness. Because this is the way this devilish force works, to create these illusions, as I've tried to explain through examples. And it's very subtle, very cunning. And it always is working where one's weakness is greatest. Because where one's weakness is greatest uh, is the place from which the illusions will arise. This is why in Goto after Goto, Nichiren Daishonin says you must maintain regular practice. If you give up even for a moment, he says, the devil will possess you. So life consists of two forces, right? Negative and positive, working against each other. If one gives, the other one's in immediately. There isn't any gap. If the positive force is declining, the negative force is taking over. That is the nature of life. Therefore, if you stop even for a day, in a sense you could say that for a moment,